the way that these uh, drones fly is through what we call as uh, remote control. Through these computers we can control whatever this uh, uh, drone does. Um, we communicate it through the computer through radio telemetry and for, for videos. They're sending signals to, to one another to be able to pick up live video feed up to about uh, 25 kilometers away. And we have about a two hour flight time in the air. Um, and it's all battery operated. So we'll go out to a site or uh, where possibly poachers have uh, come into the park on intel from park rangers. And then from there we'll set the drone out to the specific area. And within, we have a two hour flight time uh, on battery life. After that we'll have to come back and we change batteries and we can set, send it out within five minutes of changing batteries again. So it's, it's a very quick reaction time. Uh, as you can see over here, um, we have our cameras positioned inside of a gimbal. Um, and with this joystick we have a full 360 degree uh, view of, of the surroundings of the ground. During the night we attach a um, thermal imaging camera. So in that sense we'll be able to see people and uh, animals during the night and pick up on, uh, on any poachers walking through the bush. And that's basically um, what, what, we, what we're here in, in one of the national parks to do is to, is to assist with the, with the anti-poaching. Um, and that will start in September sometime. And on this is our heads up display over here where this is telling us um, everything about the airplane, the roll, the pitch, the yaw, how fast it's going and what altitude we're flying. And then underneath that we also have a map to be able to tell us exactly where are we flying. And with that we can pick up GPS coordinates and send that to rangers if we pick up on poachers. Um, and we communicate and, uh, and work in conjunction with park rangers to, to be able to catch any poachers or, or trespassers that come into the park. Um, so it's a it's a win-win for everybody, us being able to be in the sky and also being able to fly at night time and being an electric uh, aircraft, it's very difficult to hear. So we can see you but they can't see us in that sense. So yeah, We've been doing this type of operation um, in KwaZulu-Natal around all the KZN Ezemvelo wildlife parks there. Um, most of our work has been in Shishlu in Fulosi. Um, and then also we've done some flights uh, and operations in, in Kruger National Park from south to north and uh, also adjacent uh, uh, parks there like, uh, where was it? Manileti, eh? Manileti we've been there uh, to assist, uh, Sabi Sands we've been to assist there to yeah, so in the low fault, uh, KwaZulu Natal also, those are the other places and now, and now we've, we, we've come to, to Zimbabwe and, and the we've team's been, just gone up to yeah. Oh, and, and now we also have another team up that's just gone up to Malawi to assist up there too um, in operations for anti-poaching uh, and in s early September we'll be starting operations in Wangi National Park. Great. Right. Considering the vast experience that you have uh, with these drones, how effective do you think they, they are in keeping uh, the, the, this cage of poaching in Zimbabwe? Um, wherever we have flown, the poaching seems to have, have stopped almost 100%. Uh, the fact that our presence in a park, um, the, 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 the fact that our, us being present in a park, and especially through word of mouth as a deterrent to being, uh, uh, knowing that we are in the sky watching uh, anybody that comes into the park, uh, as soon as that information spreads throughout local towns and other park ranges 99% uh, of poaching stops within the area where we fly so and uh, for us we, we, we feel that's been very effective yes um, so this is what we call a battle um, developed by ourselves in terms of fuselage and, and uh, components uh, this is our ideal plan for working in the bush uh, it's very hardy it's uh, easy it's electric it's extremely silent so flying during the night looking for poachers you can't hear it also you can't see it because at night time uh, we're able to turn off the lights uh, with special compensations um, by the CAA. So at night time you can't hear it, you can't see it and we'll be able to see you and we can take off and land in very small areas, uh, small runways, long run, uh, yeah, on, on tar, on grass, on gravel, wherever we are in the bush, if we need to be there we're able to take off and land, it's no problem. So this is our drone of choice for when working uh, in harsh environments such as Wangi National Park in the, in the real bush. Uh, yeah.
and Phantom 3. Uh, and this we don't use so much in terms of surveillance, but more maybe small scale mapping um, or maybe reconnaissance on, on the other sides of mountains, uh, or small hills or, or gullies and rivers. Uh, this one you can see has a thermal imaging camera and a daytime camera attached to it. Um, and this has about a flight time of 20, 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so. So, so not really ideal for, for anti-poaching in sense. It's more small scale mapping or, or reconnaissance, just checking over what's over there or, or over here quickly. Um, but it has its applications when, when, we, do, when we do need it. Uh, a penguin bee, um, much larger, um, much more expensive in terms of, of repairing and, and running costs. It's also not our ideal uh, aircraft for the bush because it's extremely large, you need a, a very long runway. It's also powered by um, um, fuel, so it's very noisy, it's a small combustion engine. So during the night if we were to fly with this, people would be able to hear it. Um, so we haven't uh, used this in the field and, and we won't either because it's, it's, it's not the right application for anti-poaching. But in terms of, of long distance surveillance, uh, it definitely has its uh, applications in terms of maybe running railway lines and following trains um, to stop people from you know, jumping on or, or stealing things off of carriages. So there's definitely an application for this. And this uh, flies much faster, fly, can fly much higher. Um, the camera can, can see from a, a much higher distance. Um, so these are the three different drones that, that we have uh, at UDS, um, but our, our star and one that we use the most uh, and our drone of choice is our own one that we've developed is called the Batawk. Yeah. We are headset in Zimbabwe and our core business is that of infrastructural development. And on one of our trips into South Africa, when we were following up on some of our orders for, for infrastructural development, we bumped into UDS through a colleague of ours. And uh, we then established communication with them, and we just happened to be talking about wildlife and tourism in the country, and then the issue of poaching came up. And from UDS, who you saw today, Otto, then told us that they had solutions to um, anti-poaching, sorry, to poaching rather, and we in, said, look, let us follow it up and see how best you guys can come in and assist our environment in terms of uh, anti-poaching maneuvers and so forth, because they had told us that they were already carrying out that, those types of activities in South Africa, in the Kuga National Park, as well as in Natal. So we then uh, proceeded first with finding out from the relevant authorities and we approached the relevant authority which is the um, st state security because these are very sensitive issues and um, the minister was very keen and very helpful and he then requested that this be um, introduced here but first of all he needed to see a presentation and we invited the gentlemen and they came in we did a presentation to the minister who then also at the same presentation invited the minister of environment water and climate and the the the, the concept was Im immediately adopted and they then said let's have a proper presentation which we then did we then referred to the uh, department of national parks and we did yet another presentation with the then um, director general and his team and thereafter, they then decided that we needed to have some working arrangement. And the working arrangement was at least an MOU, so that there would be a document tying us. We are partners with UDS who are in South Africa, but they wanted something that can be legally referred to, because this was not just an ordinary thing. As you appreciate, it's one of its kind, and it is the first one in the country. So the legal department of the Department of National Parks then drafted an MOU, which was referred to various committees and the various other security, um, throughout the security sector, so that they would all understand where this was coming from. And after that, we were then told that this thing had now gone through the various committees and that it had to be referred to a board, which was eventually um, um, head by the whole board and they adjudicated over it. And finally, they said the MOU is correct and it was, it had passed. So the MOU was, we then sent the MOU to, to UDS and UDS looked at it 
and they made a few amendments and uh, eventually a final document was, dra was, was drafted and it was brought back here. The legal department of parks then looked it, at it again and finally drafted the final document which, is, which was eventually signed by both the department of parks and UDS drones. So in short, that is the background of the, of the drones. Thereafter, they then said, having signed an MOU, we also needed to get you gentlemen to come up and exhibit the actual physical items. And hence, we then arranged with UDS South Africa to bring the vans, sorry, the van which you are seeing here today, as well as the drones, to, to physically position them in the country and exhibit them to the minister and to the Department of Parks, which you have just done. And uh, there was a requirement for test flights to be done, which we then had to clear through the Civil Aviation Authority, and it, the permission was granted, and facilitation was also given. And as we speak this morning, we did a, flight, a flying test for the drones, which was very successful at the Charles Prince Airport. And um, later this evening, we'll show yet another application of the drones at the end of the day, to, 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 in, in order for people to understand how it operates during the day. And, and as evening falls, we will also do a night sort of demo so that people can understand the functions of the, the drone at, at both times. Wow.